Experience tranquility. Pass into the iris. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Iris Podcast. I'm your host, Bowsy. Joining me here tonight, we have Thor Yumea and we have Navino. How are you two doing this fine evening? I got fake pizza. Fake I pizza. got I got rushing to a train and trying to get here before podcast started. I think you are you have two scuffed analysts for tonight. I don't know what to tell you. Today's very <laughs> scuffed. I'm blaming that Boston Uprising flag I have on the wall behind me and the firefight shirt I'm wearing today. Which, by the way, you can get your own shirts at shop.spreadshirt.com slash tranquilitygg. I love being able to have that shameless plug. But regardless of that, we are here to break down everything going on in tranquility as we enter... The final week of the regular season. Everything is going to get spicy as we enter our final week. But of course, we have to reminisce about last week and look forward to next week with our first section of the day. Amp it up, starting off with our favorite old moment from last week. Thea, we'll start with you. If this can't be spicy. We don't have holy jalapenos in like the rosters anymore. Rousey, change, change it up, but we're going to change it up, amp it up style. And my favorite moment of last week is... I'm just more questioning what's happening in the content creation team. Like, how do we have 16 teams being listed for the top eight for for contention for top eight for Harmony NA? I'm very confused at what's happening behind closed doors for these rankings. But me and Navino have our discussion for this later on after this section. Yeah, we will definitely have a discussion about that. Let me be honest. Um, it definitely interesting i'll probably i may list off those other teams if i get gain the willpower to uh navino what is your favorite moment from last week uh honestly i really like seeing geometric versus insidious a game that i did not expect to be close and ended up being way closer um just a fun game to watch yeah i mean in, i mean insidious have been bringing constant or geometric has been going to map five for the past two weeks so it's very interesting that they've won both of them versus ace high now insidious so We'll see how they do heading into their final meet. My favorite moment happened to be all the upsets we saw in our feature matches. Hades were able to take down Space Created and Narwhal Connects, not Conks. I'm predicting tranquility, people. They were able to take over Aimbots, formerly Millibot Gaming, to be able to take the win in that series, their third win of Tranquility this season. So you love to see those upsets, and it was great to see those feature match upsets last week. But now as we head into week number nine, Thea, what are you most looking forward to as we enter the next week? I thought it's Con Dash X. I, I hate I hate team names sometimes. But okay, I'm looking forward for I guess this incoming week. It's the fact that we're starting our playoffs for one tier already this week. Um, for those who don't know, Discord EU starts their playoff run, um, this week. So we're gonna see some teams lose out on their spot in the tournament this week, and we'll see some potentially people who are in the upper bracket of their divisions drop down. Yeah, definitely. Discord tier EU starting their playoffs this week. It'll be interesting to see how that shakes up. Navino, what are you most looking forward to as we enter week nine? Honestly, I was going to say DCAPs versus Guangzhou, versus Guangzhou ga Gangsters. Uh, I think it'll be a really cool matchup. I'm interested to see how they both do because both have had very wildly different games. Like, for, And it's funny because like they both kind of had a closer week one. And then dominated their week two. And now they're playing each other. So it's like, may maybe you could like use a transitive property, figure out like who's going to do better, sort of. But it's kind of hard to because both teams dominated their week two matchup versus teams that played it closer against them in week one. So I'll be interested to see the game. Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to see that. We'll talk more about that match later on in, the epi in this episode. I'm looking more forward to if Koala Kings can be, I believe, the first Harmony tier team ever to pull off a golden season where they don't drop a single map. Up until this point, the Koala Kings have not dropped a single map all season, and they're looking poised to be able to finish it out here, uh, entering, our, entering the playoffs. So it's the potential here. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it. And now, of course, I have to bring this on us. A bold prediction that you have for the remainder of the season. Thea, we'll start with you. Brick Divers are going to lose their first match for the whole season <laughs> um, in their first playoff match. That's my big, bold, bold prediction. That's unlikely to happen, but it's a bold prediction nevertheless. 
Yeah, we'll see if they're able to do it here and if they're going to be able to, if they lose their first match in the playoffs. Navino, what is your bold prediction? You know, I, I'm pretty sure I predicted the last time because I was like, I, I love this storyline of like inner org beef, you know? So I'm going with Feeders Divided yet again because I'm a stubborn, stubborn man that wins the Feeder Civil War. So. Don't let me down. Part two. This is the Feeder Civil War Part Two. Don't let me down, Feeder. <laughs> so tonight. good, we needed a second one. Just like just so like the good. World Wars. Uh, but yeah, but it'll be interesting. Feeder War, Feeder Civil War happening in the playoffs this week. So we'll see if they're able to keep that up. I am looking. I my bold prediction happens to do with a team I literally just talked about, being the Koala Kings. I am saying that the Koala Kings will not be able to complete a Reckless Alpha Season Eight. For those who aren't aware of what that context, or it might have been Season Seven actually. It was season seven. Reckless Alpha season seven, excuse me. But for yeah. those who don't know the context there, Reckless Alpha did only dropped a single map in season seven, and that was to Battalion in the semifinals. I'm saying the Koala Kings will not be able to complete that. Obviously, the competition that they've gone up against has been fierce, but we'll have to see if they're going to be able to complete what the we'll have to see if they're going to be able to complete that reckless alpha arc but now it's time to head over to our iris top teams and everything has messed up on my graphic i love to see it uh i try so hard to make everything work and it just comes back to bite whatever someone's going to be yelling at me for this but i don't care Gra at least it looks presentable so why don't we get into our iris top teams starting off with our harmony north america top eight in 8th place is Insidious, 7th place is Strix, 6th place the Big Bang Buccaneers, 5th place Ace High, 4th place Galactic Penguins, 3rd place Geometric, 2nd place the Flashbacks, and 1st place is the Koala Kings for the first time. Thea, your thoughts on this top 8 as they disappear for a second while I try to sort this out. <laughs> this, this, this ranking, like, half of it makes sense. Then the remaining half, like, just does not make sense, like, it, in my head, right? Like, Koala Kings finally beating over Flashbacks makes complete sense because um, they've just clean clean runs, haven't dropped any map compared to Flashbacks, who they they drop maps to other teams, whether it's through losing actual maps or through draws, right? They finally face each other this week, and we'll actually see who should get the number one spot, right? But like, as it stands, Koala King's really just showing that they should be getting that number one. Now, everything else from like five onwards just makes complete nonsense to me because you have Strix who's still there at number seven when Strix is like, what, zero and two in their stage two, haven't won any map, right? They're currently struggling and here they are still in top eight when you could have teams like Narwhal Connects, Conks, Connects, Con dash X, like, <laughs> <laughs> fill up, like that top eight spot, right? That's that's my that's my critique for all of this. Like, just this just doesn't make sense from like number five onwards. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel it's rather similarly. Um, Strix being zero and eight, and stage two doesn't exactly boast confidence. Um, while Narwhal has played really well, done a lot of good things you know, and, and made a real effort and like them, it feels just like kind of, I don't, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for. It's just, it feels, I don't want to say like disrespectful or anything like that, but it just feels kind of silly. Cause it's like, yeah, Strix is like playing in a harder tier mm -hmm. granted, mm -hmm. but they are expected to compete. And it looks like they have not competed mm -hmm. at this point juncture. And I'm like, I'm hoping Strix versus X Kuznagi is a close game and both teams compete, but even X Kuznagi at least drew a map. Right, but Strix has not won a map yet and overwatched you. I apologize also, for the technical difficulties as I sort this, yeah. I was also going to keep say talking, to Potato, help me. Potato was just like stay us hating on Strix even when I joined it. <laughs> I am literally throwing their games with my internet. I don't think this is also a good pickup. My uh, internet process almost all my games. Overall, top four though, I really enjoy top five. Like I think Ace High deserves top five. I mean, uh, they lost. I mean, like, they're the definition of, because they're 0 and 2, right? Because they lost to both uh, Geometric and Galactic Penguins. Mm -hmm. So, but their definition of a team that's 0 and 2, that's, like, they lost 3 2 both times, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that is the definition of a team that deserves to still be in top 8 because they played everyone close. And you have exactly. stage 1 to go off of. Exactly. Not, winning, ta not taking the map, it's just, I feel like this list goes off more of name recognition at this point than mm -hmm. actual results, is kind of how I feel at this point. 
Remember, like, I, I, like, um, the audience really can't see it, but like, we don't know how for some weird reason someone voted for chinchillas and they are in our current list at like the 16th spot and like <laughs> the 16 on the list. I mean, but again, though, this is all subjective, right? And it is a bunch of people mm-hmm. that vote from the content team, so it's a wide variety of opinions. You know, it's yeah. cool to see, and I get where most people. You can make an argument, I think, for any of the eight teams. I just feel strongly about one of those arguments. I think you can make uh, the argument for anyone else in the top eight, you know, so. Mm, yeah, so you but really I, can make yeah. an argument about anybody, so mm-hmm. it definitely definitely True. has that sort of spice of life. I apologize. I'm trying to sort out all the issues with the top eights, but apparently they're not really working to my advantage because technology is fun. I have somehow lost the bottom four, uh, so that's where right. I'm currently just... That's what okay, I'm currently at. The good news is, right now. Yeah, that's the good news. Uh, I do only have to have the top four as we enter into – our next one. Hold on. I should be able to at least get this looking presentable at least. Uh, but yeah, our Discord EU top four. Speaking of that, our fourth place is Mythical Kitsune. Third place, Feeders Divided. Second place, Feeders United. And first place, finally, people listen to me because now it's Death Watch. Thea, what's your thoughts on this Discord tier EU? That this just makes complete sense. Like, it makes sense. There's really nothing else I could say about it. Um... Just look at it like these top four teams are also in the upper bracket for their discord for discord eu playoffs right so they all deserve to just be in top four navino your thoughts as i finally fixed our issue or i'm getting it fixed uh i feel the same maybe the only one i have switched around is maybe mitzel kasune deserves like a bit to be more considered with feeders divided i think one and two are pretty solidified then three and four are kind of more contested but outside of that like i think it makes sense you know, these have been kind of the top four the entire season. Uh, so it, it kind of just makes sense they're still here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That that really does make sense. And also, I've figured out our issue. Uh, everyone blame OBS for every sort of technical problem that we're running into today because OBS has decided to just completely hate me today. But that out of the way, we are now – I think I've now finally fixed our issue, so now I can head us into our Discord tier NA top eight, which – This is where things start to get a little bit wacky. In 8th place, you have the SEAL Team Spuds. 7th place, Joey Esports. 6th place, Avalon. 5th place, Galactic Gibbons. 4th place, MI7. 3rd place, Doodles. 2nd place, Chicago Deep Dish. And 1st place, Reminiscence. Taya, your thoughts on this top 8? This top 8 makes even weirder sense than the Harmony NA top 8, right? Like, top 4 NA for Harmony makes complete sense. The critique's mostly on, like probably six onwards, which are very interchangeable. Some teams shouldn't be there. Now, in the case of Discord NA Top 8, this makes no sense in my brain for at all. How is MI7 technically still at Top 4, right? When one, Joby Esports beats them. Number two, they've lost probably all their other matches, right? They're not looking hot, yet they're somehow still in Top 4. Then you also have teams like Galactic Gibbons, who've been winning a lot of their matches pretty decently, they could be like up probably one or two more rankings. And then honestly, like Doodles and Doodles, um Joey Esports being at seven, like I feel like they should also be higher. Like they they've been showing that they can compete. And like keep putting them at seven is like feels like a disservice. You know Yeah, maybe no. And this is where I struggle because I am biased, of course, because I coach Joey. But it does feel like Doodles got more of a boost for beating MI7 than we did, mm-hmm. which is weird. And now MI7 still, like, last week they were, like, <laughs> leaving MI7 in top four last week after a close 3 win loss to Joey. Fine. Whatever. Getting 4 out the second week in a row, they definitely, like, you can make an argument because of how dominant they were stage one to leave them in top eight. But I don't think they deserve top four. If I had to redo it, and this was a point of contention with some of us in the content team just talking back and forth. I'm not do over again. I would just move Joey up to like five or six. Uh, move people up like, um, and then maybe MI7 out, Gibbons up, Avalon. Like, and I think Avalon and Joey can kind of go back and forth on who's better at this moment. But it just it does feel kind of weird, Joey dropping all the way to seven when they had been top, they had been top four, top five most of the season. You know, and they lost a game to Deep Dish and drop. But, you know, sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles. You know, I will say Overwatch 2 is super hard to judge because it's like people feel like they got the meta at different paces. So. 
Yeah, definitely. Like, Overwatch 2 is a very weird game. There's a lot of different metas. Everything's starting to crumble, and we're supposed to get a patch this week that's going to change tomorrow. it all you over mean tomorrow. again. You mean tomorrow, right? I, I do also, mean speaking tomorrow. Speaking of cookie crumble, when we hit video, I am getting myself a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a pack right there. You can take one of them there. But... Let's finish up the top eight top teams here with our transcendence tier top eight. Hopefully not scuffed. It's a little off center. I can deal with that. But first place, but eighth place is Culture. Seventh place Frost Fisher. Sixth place Sydney Sunsets. Fifth place Classified. Fourth place Devil Dukes. Third place Amnesia. Second place Decapitators. And first place to absolutely nobody's surprise at this point is the Guangzhou Gangsters. Thea, your thoughts on this top eight? What surprises me is that our stream hasn't dropped with you saying Devil Dukes is one. Um, number two. Um, I think if there's, like, how is it? Just like um, Discord EU, Transcendence tier rankings, pretty much standard, pretty much this is what we expect. That, especially for probably the spots of, like, five onwards, the shift of who's in and out is very... It fluctuates a lot, it's varied, right? But like everything else is still the same for like your top four, which makes sense just looking at their play records for both stages. Navino, your thoughts on the top eight? Uh, I'll be real. Um, I don't know if I put Devil Dukes at four. Um, I maybe put Classified above them because they've had, I think, higher quality wins at this point. Um, Outside of that, I think I probably I actually don't put culture in top eight personally. <laughs> um, I'm just happy Frost Fisher is in like top eight right now. I would I'll put honestly, I would put Sigma or Krabby in before because I feel culture's like zero and two, oh. and I'm pretty sure though. Actually, I think most of the. I mean, honestly, I think there's an argument, and Boomers did get some votes this week, but for Boomers because they've kind of dominated the elimination pool to mm. be considered up there, and they did get a group of death in stage one. So it is. It's interesting. I'm I, like I feel like it's good overall, and I think there's arguments, mm -hmm. just some minor adjustments, like maybe cultured out of that eight spot, and then maybe Devil Dukes in five instead of classified. Um, and for the Devil Dukes players picking me, uh, you're bad. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to argue with you that they're bad. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they're, they, they currently are sabotaging your webcam a little bit over the stream, so that's the only way I'm going to I know, it. right? Yeah, that's the only way. Also, I did mention <laughs> uh, I did mention before, uh, earlier that I was going to mention the other teams that were listed in Harmony tier and A standings because we also have access to all of those. We see all 16 teams here in the content creation team that all the content creation team members have voted. So here is a honorable mention for all the people that did not make the top eight that happened to be on the list. Chinchillas, Chrysalis, Clairvoyance, Fire Breathing Rubber Duckies, Aimbots, Narwhal Connects, Fahrenheit 972, and EX Kusanagi. Some of those make sense. Others. Let's move on, shall we? Uh, before, <laughs> before anything bad happens, uh, let's head into our weekly montage for this week. Of course, we always have a weekly montage. This will be the last time that is going to be weekly after this. We head into the playoffs where there's going to be less matches, or at least I think it's going to be after this week. If not this week, next week it's going to be the last time we see them weekly. But still, we have our weekly plays montage. This one was edited by Twist. So thank you, Twist, for editing this week's montage. truly admire the rough and thorny path that a martyr must follow in life? Who actually dreams of such an ending? A king. Then tell me, what is your goal? First, I'm gonna kill you!
My Welcome cookie! Back. <laughs> Can I come back in? Welcome back, everybody. Thank you again, Twists, for that amazing montage. And Thea, as you can tell, has gotten her cookie and has already spilled it all over herself. But <laughs> at least that's what I—that's what I assume from the screaming. Am I right, Thea? It was like a crumb, but like it's fine. <laughs> all right. Well, well. Hopefully, hopefully, you can get that cookie digested soon. Uh, as we head into our segment for this week, of course. As I mentioned, this is the last week of the regular season, which means the playoffs are upon us. The playoffs begin next week, this week, if you are in the Discord EU tier. And we're going to take some time to talk about some playoff scenarios with some crucial matches. The good news is, my analysts here have the easiest job. I give them a question, they have to answer it. This is literally the easiest IRS podcast I think anyone could get assigned all season. So, let us begin with the first tier we're going to talk about, which is... Harmony EU and our most dominant team there, Break Divers. They have been extremely dominant throughout the entire season through not only our original format but through the Swiss stage. Are there any teams that you think could stand in the way of their championship run here as we enter the Harmony EU playoffs next week? Thea. I mean, if we look at it numbers wise, statistics right wise, we'll say no. But, right, you have a lot of Harmony EU teams with, you know, with the transition to Overwatch 2 have just been looking better and stronger as if, you know, the loss of one tank really enabled the team even more. And if we're going to base it on that, there's a potential for an upset against Brig Divers during the playoffs. And I think one of the teams who would be able to do that is Azir. Yeah, for me, I don't see him losing. <laughs> you know, I didn't even type this because I was just like, this is... To me, I felt this was a rather obvious mm -hmm. answer. They, I don't see them losing. I think they're fine. I think if they do lose, they would have beaten themselves. But you know, it's playoffs. Anything can happen. Anything. But as of right now, I don't see that. I, I don't see them losing. Anything and everything can happen in Harmony. You will see if Brig Divers are going to make the championship winning roster for their own. Let's move over to NA now. Now that we're done with our only EU team, we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about. Galactic Penguins and Geometric. Currently the top dogs in RMA and Harmony. There's only one match left for either team, and they're facing off against each other. So, which team comes out of that match to earn the top seed in Harmony? Aram entering our playoffs, starting with you, Thea. Um, this is the Galactic Penguins versus Geometric, right? Um, yes. I went with Galactic Penguins, not just the... Um, barring the fact that I have a soft spot for them with them dealing with me ringing and losing internet in all of their matches. Um, but if you just look at it stage two records wise, um, they just have a better map record compared to the Geometric, especially when you look at their match against Insidious, wherein I think Geometric went to a 3-2 against Insidious, G Galactic Penguins went 3-1. So if we're just looking at it a numbers game, um, Galactic Penguins should be coming out on top. Navino, what's your pick for that match, Geometric versus Galactic Penguins? I'm of the opinion that Geometric's uh, best five players, like the starting five, cannot lose at this point. That's how they vert, That's how they beat Big Bang Buccaneers in Stage 1. Like, the only time they lose is when they sub people in. And I think subs are so much more important in Overwatch, too. You know, and I don't think their, like, best five has lost a map yet, if you go back and watch their VODs. So I just don't see it happening. Um, I think they'll play in free too because I think both I think Galactic Penguins is good enough to just beat them with their subs. There's just some teams that frankly weren't good enough to even beat Geometric with their subs, but I think GP is. But I I have a lot of faith in the uh, in the Geometric core to bring it up to bring it back and uh, just close out. I mean, at the end of the day, a win is a win, right? Mm -hmm. That's I mean that's what we said about Flashback Stage One after all their close yeah. games. <laughs> Yeah, a win, a win is, is a, a win. win. Definitely with Geometric having those having two map fives and Galactic Penguins having one. So we'll have to see who's going to be able to come out on top in that match. Let's move over to RMB now with, of course, the team that really made a statement last week. Narwhal Con-X or Con-X. Not whatever you I thought it was Con-X. Well, I, like... was... I thought it was con Dash x Is it? Uh, bro, I don't know. I'm just going to call them Narwhals. All right, I hate Narwhals show. Now. I give up. We're...
The experience. Like, are they are they con as it narwhals connects? Let's move. Let's talk. <laughs> let's let's forget about the name. Let's forget about the name and let's talk about their very impressive stage two run. They have a chance now to make a to go as high as the third seed, and uh, uh, coming out of this week if Big Bang Buccaneers lose their match this week, especially after getting that big upset over Aimbots last week. However. Are, do you think that they can put themselves in a position with a win over Chrysalis this week, Thea? I mean, it's, I think, hands down, Narwhal will just beat out Chrysalis, right? I think the more important question is, for them to take that spot, they need BBB to lose. It's a question then of, can BBB beat aimbots? Because then that becomes the deciding factor. Navino, what's your take on this? Can Narwhal take out Chrysalis and put themselves in a position to get the third seed? I'd say, yeah, uh, Chrysalis is one of those teams I think is super hit or miss. Yeah, they've had a better stage too, but I do not think they're better than Narwhal. Narwhal is battle-tested, won close games, and knows what to do. Chrysalis either wins or kind of gets destroyed from what I can see. Um, so I'm going to go with Narwhal. We'll definitely see if Narwhal is going to be able to lock in that third seed for the Aurum side. Now let's head over to the Indigo side, and we're starting off with a tale as old as time. True as it can be, barely even friends, and they're probably going to be staying that way. Flashbacks versus Koala Kings, an age-old rivalry, probably a tranquility classic at this point. Th <laughs> those two teams are vying for the number one seed in the Indigo playoff bracket. This is this is not the first time that they've met in tranquility, and it probably and definitely won't be the last. Who comes out on top between these two juggernauts of Harmony North America, Thea? Dude, this is such a sleeper matchup. I need a pillow. What? <laughs> <laughs> that, that caught me it's, off guard. It's, like, I have one right here. You, you need it's it? a tale as old as time, right? Like, we're so expecting this matchup to just be a banger that I might as well sleep through it and then, like, just be expectant of, like, what's the results? Because, like, either way, both teams are good, right? Um, I'll be honest, half of my opinion that I'm basing my who's going to come out on top, like, half of, like, this, this of my choice is really based on me talking to the Strix people who have played against both teams. And in their honest opinion, and I will take their opinion with, like, high regard because they've played against both teams kk's gonna beat them kk's gonna win this matchup and i think with just how dominant they've been in all their games also it it shows yeah definitely we'll see uh i just want to comment as Zeno in the chat uh saying thor you mid after your comments on flashbacks <laughs> on the match being sleeper so your sombra is mid i have a better <laughs> sombra than you shut up <laughs> Navino, give me your take on this matchup. <laughs> you know, I'll say it again. Like, I'm obviously biased. Like, there, I'm not going to pretend the fact I'm not involved in Koala that I've that I've not been involved. You know, this season, even though remarkably, I've been less involved than I have been in previous seasons. Um, but I, I, I have faith in Koala. But I think the one thing that has makes like I think this is a toss up match. I think it'll be a good game. I think F. Flashbacks have been battle tested. They had close games for Stalwart, close games for Ace High. They had that factor that they know how to close out close games. Koala hasn't really been tested. They had a few scares here and there of losing a map, but they never had anyone come close to beating them. So it's like, do you side with the dominance or do you kind of chalk out to maybe they haven't really been challenged yet and Flashbacks is good enough to challenge them and then that X factor, that clutch factor comes into, into the play. But also, you know, I just wanted to take this time here to just, I'm just going to remember back to uh, like week one preseason bronze banter. You know, we're officially talking about bronze banter on the, on the podcast now. Um, Damn, they're getting someone, the someone, someone on that podcast said Koala would be an Elim pool team. Where are they now? Where are they? Uh, are now? they now? <laughs> I had. I feel like that it was a good reference, you know. So, you I mean, know, and now nerfed is a full on uh, koala stand. So, I mean, yeah, it's like. I mean, even weirder is you look at Koala King's A pool T A or like stage one pool, like Elim pool of that. 
No offense to any of the teams here, but Elo and Pools. Well, I, I think it was before. I think it was before Pools came out. They right. Said okay, that could make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. I think it was before Pools came out. And it so also a lot of people been, just yeah. A, a lot of people just didn't know. Like, you know, this is kind of like the the dichotomy of uh, Trank. Like, we talk about teams on the podcast. We know you. Like, we have an idea. But like, there's so many unknowns. Like, if you look at Wall's roster, like maybe two or three of them have played in Trank before. So mm-hmm. it's an unknown roster, and they've done really well this season. I'm very proud of them. And yeah. I think they'll keep going. Uh, but I just wanted to throw that tidbit in there because I thought it was funny. And, you know, I, I love seeing community content, so I wanted to give a shout-out. And it was just it was just a fun thing to bring up. I Yeah, yeah I mean, who knows? I, maybe that maybe that take was because Hayden's run the team. I don't know. But let's move over. True. To, <laughs> let's move over to our other Indigo topic here. Uh, going over to Indigo B, two teams vying for – the number third seed in Indigo, that is Fahrenheit 972 and Clairvoyance. Both very, a lot of promise after kind of weak stage one performances. So, which team do you think is going to be heading over to the third seed with a win this week, Thea? Um, so, I'll be honest, with the incoming nerfs that are happening to certain characters tomorrow before Harmony NA matches, I would be giving this to Clairvoyance. I think, I, I'll be honest, Clairvoyance has been very under the radar for me. I've been more up to date with what's happening with F972. But if I am to trust how the record is looking and how, the, um, and I guess, you know, like how the record has been, I think they can be competitive. Navino, what is your thought on this matchup? I I feel I'm of the opinion that main tanks are going to become more viable once the patch hits. So I think that kind of actually benefits Fahrenheit 972 and like their really mm. nice main tank play. But now take this with a grain of salt. <laughs> of the four O's from stage one. Clairvoyance was the closest 4-0 that Koala played. Even closer than, than uh, Insidious' 4-0. So, take that as you will, I guess. Like, I'll be real, I, I like how Clairvoyance was playing the stage, but I think it kind of depends how the meta swings and how they adjust. But because I think it's going to favor more um, main tank-centric comps, I've, I'm leaning F972. And we'll see how well those two teams are able to fare off and which one's going to be coming out on top. I'm just going to make sure that is indeed the matchup that they're having. Yes, it is. So we'll see if, if Fahrenheit or Clairvoyance come out in that matchup. But now let's move out of Harmony North America and head over to Discord Tier EU, which I've mentioned, and obviously our analysts have mentioned as well. The playoffs begin this week for Discord Tier EU. Now you're wondering, but what about the bracket predictions that you usually do? What about the bracketology? Don't worry. I have it settled. We're planning to do a recording of our Discord TRU predictions, and then we can see how wrong we are after the first week happens of Discord TRU playoffs. So, with that out of the way, let's. I want to ask you two some questions. First off, which team do you foresee taking the title as it stands right now? If the title were to be, if the championship match were to be tomorrow, who was taking? Who's taking the title, Thea? Mm, honestly, like we've, they've been having to struggle at this the second spot this whole um season until recently they finally take first i think death watch just looks dominant they'll run with it navino who's your championship pick right now i'm sorry it's also death watch they be <laughs> like and they also have recency bias because they just beat feeders united really recently so take that with a grain of salt but I, if i had to pick one today i'm gonna go off the mm-hmm. most recent match that happened which is Death Watch beating Feeders United. Death Watch, I mean, I said it last week. They should have been the number one team last week, and I think they made a statement in their feature match against Berserk, and now they were able to take that number one seat, that number one uh, seat on the top teams this week. So Death Watch definitely looking strong, and uh, you'll probably see in comms check that they have a little bit of strategy in terms of uh, breaking games. We'll talk we'll, – we'll, sh- you'll be able to see that later in our comms check. But um, – Outside of that, what team do you think in the lo- that is more lower in the standings that you think might have a chance at making a run for that title? I'm probably looking at maybe like lower bracket, maybe fourth seed if you really wanted to. Thea, we'll start with you. I mean, I'll uh, to make it a bit more challenging, I'll pick someone from lower bracket. And mm. I think Dragon's Aura would probably be the closest 
to making a run for it in the lower bracket. Um, close match against Mythical Kitsune, who currently has like the number four spot um, in Discord EU. So they look competitive. I think they just need to tighten things up to make a really good run at lower bracket. <laughs> Navino, your pick for <laughs> your pick for an underdog that you think will make a big championship run from the lower bracket or just like not. I would say I would I I said like your limit is like fourth seed, so. Uh, I I I was gonna say, I, yeah I was gonna say mythical Kasune. Uh, that's fourth seed, so that's fourth yeah, so, seed. So you can work yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll work with it. You know, hmm. I like mythical Kasune. I think they've been kind of up and down, but I like them. So yeah. Most roster. I like their logo. It's so great. <laughs> their lo- it is very nice. Their logo. logo and name is their logo and name is my favorite. Uh, they also have the most roster transaction in Discord tier U history, so they they definitely have taken that title uh, to heart. But no, they look pretty good. We'll have to see if they're able to keep up that momentum. Now let's head over to Discord tier North America, and we have to talk about the Chicago Deep Dish. They are currently in the position to take the number one seed in the RM playoffs. Their only opponent standing in their way is MI7. Now, entering stage number two, people would have said that this would have been a very close matchup, but MI7 has only won a total of one map in stage number two. That is one singular map in stage number two. They have not won a match in the first two weeks of the stage. Sorry, I had to pause there for a second. I thought I heard something, but, uh, but basically... This is going to be a very intense match for MI7. Do you think that MI7 can pull off the upset against Chicago Deep Dish and play spoiler to their number one seed hopes and uh, entering the playoffs? Thea, we'll start with you. Can we start with Navino? <laughs> Actually, okay. We might as well. Okay. Navino, you start instead. I'm sorry for your loss. To... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I say yes. I think... Laura was missing missing for both her two games, and he is a large presence for them. If anyone could bring MI7 back from the brink, it is him. So I'm honestly going to go MI7 3 2. I'm also I'm pretty sure Deep Dish, unless like unless Joey or Doodles 4 0 cannot lose like the number one seed. Because they're like six and two map diff. While yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I can check mm. that. If they yeah, no, Laura is back. I know, team. Yes, I'm aware. I knew he was missing last week too. <laughs> He's back. I know. Uh, so I'm saying Laura can bring them back. Laura is the glue that holds them together. I believe. I I, I think, think yeah, they I, might I, be able to. Um, because I Joey's think if like zero, deep dish. Yeah, currently, and then deep and dish then are currently plus one. Yeah, and then Doodles are plus one. So unless Doodles 4-0 us, and like, and and then Deep Dish basically have to lose like three one or worse or something. I want to say there's a lot of math behind the behind this, but so I think that, but I think they're top two regardless. But I think they're guaranteed number one seed unless Doodles 4-0. Because hmm. for those for those that don't know, map differential I'm pretty sure comes first in the tiebreakers. Mm-hmm. So, yes. So, so map differential comes first. So like that's what you gotta care about. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see here. All right, but now let's over head over to Thea this time. Uh, Thea, do you need a timer Recipe, because Thea. I read I read what you said. Yeah, on we kind of need a thirty second timer for I'll this. Give you, I'll give you one. All right, I'll count it down. Ready? Your thirty seconds start in three, two, one. Now. Okay, Chicago Deep Dish should be able to do this out because Dab Master 66 has actually been a very decent uh, general manager for this team this year, uh, this season. Because looking at their standings right now, they're seven and zero, meaning that he has picked a very decent players for this season, and they have been running with such a good roster. The fact that they also won in UGC says a lot, and he's just carrying this over to this season now. How that works also is that he has brought in old talent from UGC who are up. ineligible to play to coach the team and they and that's also their support line that's being coached. Therefore they are doing significantly well. Dab paid fifteen dollars for this <laughs> for me to do this for thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you see the stuff I go through on a daily basis, everybody. <laughs> I hope you're aware of this. 
Now it's time to go away from Deep Dish. We're done with that pizza. It's been cooked. It's been eaten. It's been billed. Let's move over to our, our pool B now. And let's talk about a team that also made some waves in a feature mouse last week. I'm talking about Hades. Hades, uh, very, very impressive R in Pool B, taking wins over both Ragnarok Loki and Space Created. But now they have to go down under. Literally, they're facing off against Adelaide Eclipse, and they are the only team standing in their way to get a third seed in the R in Pool. Do you foresee Hades locking in the third seed with a win over Adelaide Eclipse? Thea, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, I'm that. Um, okay, so like, I commend Hades for like winning all their matches, right? And actually pulling upsets, right? But I still think at the end of the day, Adelaide is going to win. Um, I in their match against um Hades. Um, just that's taking to the fact that just one of Adelaide's losses is literally just a forfeit that doesn't really say a lot about the team because like they did win with like a clean 4-0 in their other match so i'm honestly at the end of the day as much as hades looked really good they're probably just going to be ending up with the i don't know if it's the first the third seed or the fourth seed it'd be th so top two and be get three and four so yeah I think it's, yeah but at least they're guaranteed like upper bracket one way or another, which I think what matters for a lot of these B pool teams is that second life when you manage to qualify for upper bracket. Davino, your thoughts on Hades? If Adelaide shows up to the game, they win. Uh, kind of the same reasons as as honestly Thormeo put out, you know, and they still have like a very good DP, like a, a proven DPS duo in the tier with Swifters and Tannic. Both on Joey last season, both the runners up, both very good. Um, and I, and especially in Overwatch 2, you can see how dominant a team like that could be in just like the one game they played, which was, you know, versus Space Creator where they 4 out. And I just don't see Hades overcoming that. So as long as Adelaide actually shows up to the game, they're good. As long as they don't have connection issues and Hayden's teams are not scuffed for the first time. Uh, but as long as Hayden's teams are not scuffed as they typically are, it seems. But we'll see if they're able to take that win over Hades next week. Let's talk about an Indigo A matchup between Reminiscence, Remlus, and Galactic Gibbons. They are currently at the top of Indigo A, and their next matches are up against each other to lock up that top seed in our Indigo bracket. Which team is taking home the dub? Thea, we'll start with you. Uh, I have, like, a soft spot for, like, Galactic Gibbons, but, like, I feel like at the end of the day, just, like, the overall, like, individual teams, like, individual player skill of Rem is just going to overwhelm them as much as, like, they might have similar macro understandings. I think at the end of the day, just the skill level of some um, Rem players, like, Try and uh, Reborn is just going to overwhelm the support and DPS line of Gibbons, ultimately giving it to Rem. Davino, what's your thoughts on Rem versus Galactic Gibbons? I'm not really... The, I, I, I think of the two A tiers, and I think I said this... I don't know if I said this last week. Probably. Probably or, a few weeks I, ago. I, but I think the A group with Joey, MI7, Doodles, and uh, Deep Dish is like a harder A group. I think Rem is by far the best team in this A group. I'm not that impressed by the rest of the teams in this group. So yes, Gibbons have won the game she's supposed to. I do not see... Rem losing this. And unfortunately, Reborn is probably the best DPS in the tier. Probably. I hate saying that. Reborn, you suck. Um, Don't so... give him airtime. Don't give him airtime. We stopped yeah. there. Yeah, we stopped there. <laughs> we stopped there. Rem hashtag Rem lose. Hashtag. Know, uh, hashtag uh, uh, maybe hashtag try for MVP if we don't want to say hashtag Rem lose. I don't know. And uh, also, uh, this is because I see QZY in chat. QZY, I own you. <laughs> um, but do you? But do you? I do, I do. Okay. He's uh, he's he's mid he's mid ZY. All right. All right. Well, I'll take your word for it. Let's move away from that matchup and head over to the SEAL Team Spuds. They hold the destiny in their hands after beating Hammerhead in a very close three to two matchup last week. The only team in their way stopping them from getting that third seed in Indigo playoffs is Adrenaline's. Do you foresee them beating this team and locking in the third seed? Thea, we'll start with you. 
Yes. I'm sorry, like, I... I'll be honest, like, without a doubt, Skill Team Spuds should be cleaning up our adrenalines. I don't think there's any competition for this. And I'm just... I'm Like, this opinion of mine is just from the fact that I get secondary, like, opinions from the Thunder Duckies who I help, like, manage. And for them, it's like... Uh, Seal Team Spuds should take it. No, no. Yeah, you'll definitely see that. Quick, real quick, before I go to Navino, I'm seeing people enter giveaway entries. The, our giveaway entry has our, our giveaway uh, recipient has already been pulled, so those will go toward next week's uh, polling. So if you want to win, was a, too slow. A, li- a gap was too slow. So was T Fast, ironically. Navino, uh, what about your thoughts on Seal Team Spuds versus Adrenalines? Can they get that third seed? Can they? Hundred percent. Will they? We will see. Because Spuds, I think, have a notorious <laughs> problem of uh, playing up and down to their competition. They play teams that they should beat close. They play teams they should lose to close, and sometimes take out the wins. It all comes down to clutch factor. I think, like, I, like there's some teams that just do that, right? There's some teams mm-hmm. that, for some reason, seem to match the skill of who they're playing right because they they rise and fall to the occasion you know it's like that team that's like good enough to compete with the top teams if they if they try really hard but not good enough that they slack off that they can slack off versus lower teams but they do and then they bite them in the butt um i would actually put devil dukes in that category too (laughs) like no true like truly i was Um, just going to say maybe Maybe Boonkar and Ricky are just like cursed at this rate for entering <laughs> map fives. I'm sorry, like they're my former teammates. We've been in too many fa- map fives to count. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe they're just cursed. They could just be cursed. I mean, it's all it's all up in the air. But yeah, you speak about like Steel Team Spuds playing up or down of their composition. Like you look at just you look at just the first few weeks. They go to map five against Joey Esports. Two weeks later, they lose to Redacted. So. <laughs> Up and down to your competition, I think that does a really good job of summarizing it there. But now, that is all we have to say about the SEAL Team Spuds and of Discord Tier North America. So now it's time to move on to our final group, which is Transcendence Tier. And we're starting off with a match that one of us has already mentioned. That's right. It's the Battle of the Juggernauts. Guangzhou Gangsters versus Decapitators are facing off for the first time since the Season 8 semifinals. These two teams have a combined total of three maps lost all season. Count that one, two, three maps lost all season between both of these teams. They're facing off to determine the number one seed in Transcendence tier playoffs. Thea, who's taking home the victory? I mean... I'd like to give benefit of the doubt to like the caps. They're gonna the captators. They're going to make that close. But I feel like at the end of the day, um, Guangzhou gangsters just have way better clutch factor. So I'm expecting it more to be like a three-two, probably than leads to, leans towards Guangzhou. Navino, your thoughts on this matchup? Who's taking the dub? I'm going Guangzhou. Um... You kind of only have like matchups right now to really go off each other, and I think um, they four would Amnesia, who went to map five with Decaps, but you know Decaps four would Sydney, who went who three one, got three one by GCG. But when you watch that G, that Decaps Sunset game, there's I, I'm sorry, there's no way that was a real game. There's just no way. There's no real way that was a real game. So I'm going with my gut with the dot with the proven product. Uh, and that's GCG. I think they'll. I think they take it in three one. We'll definitely see how that match goes on here between the two juggernauts of transcendence tier. Let's move over to Group B now, and let's talk about the team that is cursed. Navito knows it. Thea knows it. Mm-hmm. I know it because every time I mention their name, or at least for the past couple weeks, my OBS disconnects for some reason. So I'm gonna hope it doesn't. Devil Dukes. Probably the most inconsistent and cursed team in all of Transcendence tier this season. Obviously, we've talked about how inconsistent they've been, but this week they roll into a match with Frost Fisher with what most likely will be the terminating of the third seed in the Transcendence tier. Your playoffs, Frost Fisher, 
some very impressive results after grabbing some roster transactions, including uh, du- including recruiting the number one sleep paralysis demon on the content creation team, Mr. Larsh, or Lars, whichever one you want to name it. But Devil Dukes have also made some very interesting roster changes and have been able to get out some good results as well. Who comes out on this comes out on top between this matchup between Devil Dukes and Frostfisher? Thea, let's start with you. I'm on some Frostfisher copium. I'll be honest. <laughs> so I'm I, I'm giving this to Frost Fisher, um, not just the fact that they've picked up Lars before Overwatch Two started, and he's been really solid. It also doesn't change like my opinion the fact that they do have like a former Frost Nova coach who, you know, last season Frost Nova's playoff run shouldn't be shouldn't have been shouldn't have gotten as far as it did, but like it did because of them, right? And I think they're other DPS player with Mirai just like does really well so I I'll be honest like it it's a solid team and I think there's a potential for an upset against um Devil Dukes and I'm on that copium <laughs> Navino what's your thoughts on this matchup between Devil Dukes and Frost Fisher Frost Fisher got forwarded last time they played yeah they have somewhat different team DD kept largely the same roster and I think DD have finally solidified the way they want to play. If you just watch their game versus Arctic Foxes, I think they're playing much better in Overwatch 2. Um, but we, we will see. Like, uh, I don't think Frost Fisher takes the dub, though. I mean, they... Frost Fisher, like, in Overwatch 2, lose to Arctic Foxes, who got 4 0 and then beat... Uh, Sigma, who did go to map five with a DD. So I think it'll be a 3 1 in favor of DD. We'll definitely see how well uh, Frost Fisher able to do in that matchup. Let's wrap up our playoff implications section here with our final matchup in Group C, where the Krabby Crabbers and Culture are get- will be getting their hands or claws on each other this <laughs> week with the upper bracket six seed on the line. Which of these two teams will be coming out on top? Thea, starting with you. I mean, I I think Krabby Crabbers should probably take that six seed. I I don't know. Culture has been just very inconsistent to me compared to Krabby Crabbers, who with pickups have done at least looked better, right? So I, I'm leaning towards that and making my decision based on that. Just want to clarify. I believe it's the eighth seed actually they're fighting for, but still, point gets across. Navino, which seems coming out on top. I'm going Krabby Crabbers. They show up there's a match to lose, but they are very inconsistent. But I'm a, I've also been sit. I feel like culture's been on a skid. I'm not very impressed by them right now. So hope like maybe this is where they turn it around. But I think this Krabby Crabbers game to lose. We'll see if Krabby Crabbers are able to get it done, or if culture is going to be taking that culture shock. But that is all of our playoff scenarios covered here entering our final week of the regular season but now we have our comms check this week uh edited by uh, again this weird guy named boosie why does he keep editing videos he's not even that good at it but boost are you saying just wait i don't get it navino i'll talk to, i'll talk to you when the video is playing <laughs> thank you I... let's get comms check rolling <laughs> For real? For real? For real? For real? I don't remember this part. For real? I'm gonna dominate this crowd. No, 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 actually, actually, no. Crazy no more. Right oh my god. <laughs> Locked on Octra. Locked the Diva. Ah, yes. Doom. I feel like of all the That's Discord tier cool. teams, just sitting in your guys' VC for less than two minutes is basically, basically gives me the vibe of content and that's it. Dude, does anybody here have, a, have an air fryer? Dude, I am the person of belief that the air fryer is worthless. Just put it in your convection. The fuck is a convection oven? I'm air fryer that I've never used. Did you rebrand it up? Because I made yeah, I, just I made the convection oven. It's the same. I made bacon in my air fryer today, and it was so good. Yeah, why, why is my team inside? Put bacon in a fryer. Baboon! 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 Let's do one, let's do one, let's do one, let's do one! Soldier, soldier this, soldier this, soldier this, soldier this! Soldier, 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 soldier
Just run half, run half, run half. Fix your planes out! Doesn't matter if we win or not this fight! No side! Run, run! Falls one. Up here, sir. God. Oh, uh, they got. Over. How many more rubber duckies do I need to murder? <laughs> He's inside the car, Jack Quack! Oh my god, yeah. Wait, monkey has oh, sight. Monkey I should be able to pulse here really early. I got point. I see, you guys see. Yaka. I can't. One. Shut up. Shut up. I'm working. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, nice. I'm gonna bust oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Oh my it's it's everywhere. It's like Torball, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Got both the fours, got both the fours! Okay, go, I'm bombing car, bombing car, bombing car! Got two! Got three! Batches, 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 I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. Soldier low, soldier low, just monkey soldier, just monkey soldier. Monkey low, monkey, I got monkey! Oh my god! I solo this! Game! Fuzzy, you're f***ing crazy. I'm on diva. I can't aim, I'm having a dab master moment. Okay, maybe. Soon after. Later. I feel like that, in that meme, it like, could be a pretty nice space if you just like painted it. It's all like playing. <laughs> painted it and made a cover. Eternal, I'm convinced you can find the good in anything. <laughs> if you like painted it like nice bright white and like you put posters up there, like it would look nice. <laughs> he's in the, like, the world is burning and he's just like, oh, yeah. pretty fires everywhere. <laughs> At least you're not cold. Nemo <laughs> <laughs> just messaged me, how's game? I said, 2 well us. He said, wait, it's been 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that comms check video. Uh, I apologize for the ad, but at least it played on the one that was actually had closed captions. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Uh, I blame Dabmaster because his gif was included in that. But let's go. Let's go into our matches to watch this week as we enter the final week of the regular season. Thea, what match are you looking forward to this week? Uh, because I submitted my stuff late and someone decided to take Quangshu Gangsters versus Decapitators, I am what? forced to pick the sleeper matchup that I would like to bring a pillow in, aka Koala Kings versus Flashbacks. <laughs> and I'm predicting that, you know, people would probably say 3-2, but I'm going to make the spiciest take and say it's a 3-1 in favor for KK. Navino, what's your match to watch this week? You know, since you guys went with the other two tiers, I'll go with Discord. <laughs> well, because I already talked about the Feeder Civil War, so, I, like, I want to go with Discord tier A. I'm going to go back to the, um, what was the word? MI7 versus Deep Dish game. I think uh, MI7 takes that 3-2. Mm, with Laura back in play. Interesting. We'll have to see if MI7 are able to take that win. Now, obviously, Thea mentioned it. So did Navino. I got to fill out this part first, so I got to pick my match. The Guangzhou Gangsters versus Decapitators. I mentioned it. It's the first time these two teams are meeting up since Season 8 semifinals. So this is definitely going to be one heck of a match, and it's going to be interesting to see. The winner claims an undefeated season and the first seed in the Transcendence Tier Playoffs, and I have it, the Guangzhou Gangsters. Three to one. So, 
that's our predictions here. I would say uh, there is more predictions coming up, but Predicting Tranquility has already aired because we had to delay the start time of the Iris podcast. But that being said, there are still more predictions coming up next week. Next week, if you are unaware, is our Bracketology Megacast. It is a collaboration between myself and the Iris Podcast and Nerfed and Predicting Tranquility, where we are predicting every bracket in every single tier in Tranquility Gaming. You do not want to miss that Megacast happening next week. So it's going to be it's going to be one echo of a cast, and it's most likely our longest podcast episode of the season. So make sure you stay tuned to that next week. We also have our features this week. We do not have a Harmony EU feature this week. Unfortunately, we were unable to organize one, but we do have a Harmony North America. We do have some features in North America. I have not gotten word yet if we have a Discord EU matchup, but I'm going to check that really quickly as I stall it out trying to figure out if we do have a matchup for Discord Tier EU. It's popping up right here. I'm getting it up, and we're going to have to see. Okay, we're trying to get a match sorted for Discord Tier EU as well, but most likely we will be able to. But in terms of our NA matches, we have, if I pull it up, Insidious versus Ace High on Tuesday, Frost Fisher versus the Devil Dukes on Wednesday, and Thunder Duckies versus Hammerhead on Thursday. Those will all be at 9 p.m. Eastern Distance Time EDT. Make sure, same place, same same place here on twitch.tv slash tranquility gg some other announcements we have we need you gms out there if you are watching to submit your end of season nominees make sure you get those award nominees in or else your players will not be receiving any nominations or awards speaking of that end of season awards and nominations we need members for the end of season awards committee specifically for eu and the transcendence tier so if you want to be a part of picking out the nominees and winners for the for the end of season awards nominate for the end of season awards in season nine Try to apply to the committee. As I mentioned last week, if you do not apply to the committee or do not attempt to apply <laughs> to the committee, you have no right to complain about the nominations and winners of the end of season awards. But now it's time to close it out with our giveaway winner for a free shirt from our store at shop.spreadshirt.com slash tranquility gg. And that winner, if I can get some sort of drum roll, please. That winner is drake pasty from the flashbacks congratulations pasty for winning this week's t-shirt giveaway but that is going to be it for us here tonight for thea and navino thank you all for watching my name is Mousy. we thank you all for gazing into the iris with us until we meet again we hope you have an amazing night and an amazing week in tranquility gaming experience tranquility Pass into the iris.